7.25 i think these are the patients who are very sick and they are likely to deteriorate uh, very rapidly all these patients should be in the icu setup they should be either put straight on invasive ventilation or they can also be given a trial of non invasive ventilation provided they are, they are, this is given under st strict supervision and uh, uh, patient should be monitored over a period uh, every half an hour uh, and you look into the various uh, parameters like respiratory rate the oxygenation degree of dyspnea and if you find that there is not significant improvement or there is any element of deterioration in these parameters this patient should ideally be uh, intubated and uh, treated uh, with mechanical ventilation the contraindication to non invasive ventilation uh, uh, you can see here are mentioned the, the those patients who are unconscious those who are confused those with respiratory arrest because these are the people who require total ventilatory support non invasive ventilatory support is a partial ventilatory support where the patient has a sufficient respiratory effort the those with respiratory arrest unstable cardiovascular status patient with hypotension or other hemodynamic uh, problem uncooperative patient <coughs> facial or esophageal or gastric surgeries because there will be difficulty in applying the mask in these cases craniofacial trauma burns severe acidemia a ph of less than 7.25 or 7.2 i think indicates a severe disease uh, other comorbidities high risk of aspiration particularly when the patient is drowsy or there is a gastric distension uh, patient is not able to protect his airway anatomical lesions of the upper airway extreme anxiety obesity if there are lot of secretions and patient is not able to cough them out and patient is vomiting so all in all these situation i think it is better to intubate this patient and treat them with invasive ventilation so non invasive ventilation uh, is the gold standard mode of ventilatory support for exacerbation of copd with with endotracheal tube intubation and mechanical ventilation regarded as a second line rescue therapy when it fails now we go into the indication of intubation so there are there are a group of patients who when present to the emergency uh, may not be the right candidate for non invasive ventilation these are patients with the uh, uh, deterioration of gas exchange despite medical therapy particularly uh, along with medical therapy if they are on non invasive ventilation and there is a failure of non invasive mechanical ventilation uh, there are progressive signs of respiratory muscle fatigue respiratory arrest worsening mental status patient becoming drowsy unconscious comatose or if there are hemodynamic changes patient developing hypotension or shock so these are the situation i think the patient should be uh, considered for endotracheal intubation the important thing here is that those patients who have got hypotension those who have got a slow uh, deterioration of their uh, acute exacerbation of copd those who have developed this exacerbation over a period of days many of them uh, may not have taken adequate fluids they may be hypotensive they may be hypovolemic and once you intubate and put them on invasive positive pressure ventilation they can go into acute hypotension and shock what we call as pulseless electrical activity so it's very important uh, that these patients should be uh, properly and adequately hydrated before they are intubated or once they are intubated their blood pressure and uh, other hemodynamic parameters should be uh, monitored clearly before there is another issue before we decide to put a patient on invasive ventilation there are certain important thing one should take into account whether we should put a particular patient uh, on invasive ventilation we must be very sure that uh, it is not an end stage lung disease number 2 we should also look into the quality of the life if the patient has been living a very poor quality of life he has been basically a, a home bound or a bed bound patients who has got a very advanced disease and where uh, the clear cut evidence of acute exacerbation is not there then probably it is the terminal stage of illness and if we put this patient uh, on ventilator then it may be very difficult to get them out of ventilator so you should have some treatable element you should have some evidence of acute deterioration only then 
these patients should be put on mechanical ventilation. Ideally, such issues should be discussed uh, before the patient develops acute exacerbation because when these patients are coming to you uh, in OPD for their regular follow-up, then you must discuss with them, you must uh, evaluate them, you must be aware of the severity of their disease and you must ask them that in case they deteriorate, would they like to go on ventilator or would you like to put them on ventilator and what is, uh, is going to be the likely outcome of mechanical ventilation in these cases. So these are certain ethical issues uh, which one has to take into account, end of life uh, issues uh, which one has to uh, take into account before putting this patient into ventilator. In order to understand the uh, principles of mechanical ventilation, it is important to understand the pathophysiology of a COPD exacerbation. You know most of these patients have airway narrowing, they have a bronchospasm, they have secretions in the airway. Once they develop this, there is an increase in the resistance to airflow. In order to overcome this increase in the resistance to airflow, most of these patients uh, uh, develop hyperinflation. So there is a gas trapping, there is a hyperinflation. Once they develop hyperinflation, they develop auto-peep and this auto-peep leads to increase in the inspiratory threshold workload with the result there is an increased work of breathing. Because of the air trapping and hyperinflation, their diaphragm goes down and their uh, strength also goes down. With the result, they, uh, their uh, work of breathing goes up, they are the, the, the ability of the respiratory muscles, particularly the diaphragm, to generate enough inspiratory force also goes down. So they develop um, uh, fall in the tidal volume and there is an increasing respiratory rate. So the important thing is things which a patient with acute exacerbation of COPD has is hyperinflation, auto peep and increased work of breathing. So when you put this patient on ventilator, it is very important that they do not develop uh, first of all uh, respiratory uh, muscle atrophy. Once you put them on ventilator, uh, their respiratory muscle should be given adequate rest but that too for a short period of time that is about 24 hours after that you have to shift them into some kind of uh, partial ventilatory support so that their respiratory muscle do not develop atrophy due to inactivate, inactivity. They, sh they, sh they should also uh, use the ventilatory strategy so that there is no further increase in the dynamic hyperinflation and since they most of these patients have auto peep and they have inspiratory threshold load you have to use PEEP, external PEEP to minimize this auto PEEP to have better triggering of their ventilation. The best way to adjust PEEP in this case is by looking into their breathing pattern, by looking into their accessory muscle work or you can also put in an esophageal catheter and monitor their esophageal pressure monitor, uh, pressures and then you can see that what is the best PEEP you can give to this patient. Now this is what you can see in a normal person at normal end expiration the pressure in the alveoli is zero and the pressure outside in the atmosphere is also zero. So there is uh, no auto peep. In patient with COPD as you can see here because of the dynamic compression of the airways there is an auto peep as you can see here the alveolar pressure is 10 centimeter and the outside pressure is uh, atmospheric pressure is zero. So before the next inspiration start this alveolar pressure has to be first brought to zero and then minus two only then the inspiration will start. So the threshold inspiratory load in this case is about 10 to 12 centimeters, uh, 12 centimeters if your triggering sensitivity on ventilator is minus 2 centimeters. To reduce this threshold inspiratory load, you can actually give to this patient an external peep of 10 centimeters. This peep should be equivalent to an auto peep or at least 80 percent of the auto peep you should give an external peep. This will significantly reduce the inspiratory threshold load and work of breathing in these patients. The another goals of mechanical, uh, because these patients have uh, significant increase uh, work of breathing in the form of increased inspiratory load, the another, uh, so, so that can be adequately taken care of by external PEEP. Then you can also use pressure support. The pressure support is uh, preferred. Uh, with the pressure titrated to a tidal volume of 250 to 400 ml when the patient is spontaneously breathing. The respiratory rate should be kept less than 30 per minute. These are the patients with mild, mild to moderate exacerbation. In more severe cases, when the auto PP is very high, you need to use uh, uh, controlled ventilation 
in such cases these patient need to be sedated uh, they may have to be paralyzed for a short period of time and you have to decrease the minute ventilation to uh, less than 115 ml per kg body weight and this you can achieve by keeping the tidal volume low and also the respiratory rate below 14 breaths per minute and this is guided by the plateau pressure and your plateau pressure has to be kept uh, below 25 centimeters of water uh, uh, because above this uh, there is a very high risk of barotrauma and pneumothorax. In order to improve the expiratory time you must keep the inspiratory flow rates very high. High inspiratory flow rate will decrease the inspiratory time and this will give enough time for the expiration in these cases. So these are the basic principle of uh, giving invasive ventilation to these patients and whenever we are uh, the uh, guiding the total minute ventilation in these patients. You must link into uh, the parameters of dynamic hyperinflation in these cases uh, by uh, uh, looking into their plateau pressure, by looking into the hemodynamic status and if uh, there is a significant dynamic hyperinflation, you have to decrease the minute ventilation in these cases. As far as possible, try to avoid using these muscle relaxant. Those patients who require mechanical ventilation for more than 7 to 10 days or failed a trial of weaning and extubation on non-invasive ventilation, they should be, tracheostomy should be done, preferably percutaneous uh, uh, dilate, dilatational tracheostomy is a preferred method over surgical technique uh, because, uh, uh, because it can be done in the ICU, it is convenient and it heals quickly once uh, you remove such tubes. The tracheostomy is basically done to decrease the dead space and it also decreases the irritation in the mouth and the nose and decreases risk of infection. It also helps in suctioning, it reduces the requirement of sedation. The disadvantages of tricostomy is uh, that uh, there is a high risk of nosocomial infection, local trauma, reduced capacity to cough effectively and loss of natural humidification. The tricostomy can be safely removed once the suctioning requirement is less than every two hours and patient is capable of independent ventilation and cuffing and no anatomical abnormality that would preclude natural ventilation. So uh, to conclude, non-invasive ventilation is the modality of choice uh, for treatment of uh, patient with acute exacerbation of COPD who developed significant uh, hypercapnia, acidemia and uh, 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 narcosis. Uh, those uh, the the, the non-invasive ventilation is a kind of an intermediate stage when the patient does not become very sick and if it is used effectively and at a proper time many of these patient uh, in many in many of these patient endotracheal intubation can be avoided and most of the complication related to invasive ventilation can be avoided thank you very much thank you so much dr jc suri for being with us in our studios and giving such valuable information about non invasive and invasive ve uh, ventilation in acute exacerbation of copd and thanks to you dr tk jano also uh, friends we will be back uh, after 15 minutes in our last session of today's teleconferencing program till then stay tuned.